In this short video, we're going to continue our discussion of homogeneous systems of differential equations. And we're going to look at the case now where we have repeated eigenvalues. Remember, eigenvalues are just the solutions to a polynomial equation. And you can have repeated roots to a polynomial equation. So here's an example. Let's look at this differential equation. We have our vector x prime equals a times x, where a has the entries 3, negative 18, 2, negative 9. So let's look at the characteristic equation. We just have to calculate a 2 by 2 determinant. And that gives me the polynomial equation lambda squared plus 6 lambda plus 9 equals 0. And that has only one root, lambda 1 equals negative 3, and its multiplicity is 2. So let me spell multiplicity correctly. All right, so let's see what we can do. We have lambda 1 equals 3 is our only eigenvalue. I go ahead and substitute. Sorry, I meant to say lambda 1 equals negative 3. And unfortunately, this is the correct coefficient matrix when lambda equals negative 3. And go ahead and perform our Gaussian elimination steps uh, till we get to a row of zeros. And so that tells me that x1 is minus 3 times y1, which equals 0, and y1 is free. So I can just choose a value for y1. I chose y1 equals 1, making x1 equal to 3. So my eigenvector is 3, 1. But that only gives me one solution. How can we get a second solution? We don't have a second eigenvalue. We don't have a second uh, linearly independent eigenvector. Well, in some cases, and we're going to see an example, where lambda may have a multiplicity of m, and you find m linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to that value of lambda. Well, how can that happen? Well, let's just think about it. In a dependent uh, solution, if you only have one free variable, that is exactly like having a one-parameter family of solutions. If you have two free variables, then you could have a two-parameter family of solutions. So you could choose, it's like having a C1 and a C2, you can choose those values and get two different linearly independent solutions. However, if you have multiplicity m, but you only get one eigenvector, and that's we're going to call that k1 or k sub 1, 1, you can construct a chain of solution vectors using this process. So the first one is the solution vector corresponding to the eigenvector. To get the second one, and this is where you would stop if you only, the multiplicity is 2, is you would need to find two other vectors, k21 and k22. The first one gets multiplied by t times e to the lambda 1t. The second one just gets multiplied by e to the lambda 1t. This corresponds exactly with the process that we saw uh, when we were just dealing with a single uh, second order differential equation, and we looked at its auxiliary equation. We didn't look at third order, but if we had, we would have something similar to this. So if we had a multiplicity of 3 with our eigenvalue, then we would have three terms. And they would be mul multiplied by most likely different vectors. Uh, and you'd have 1 multiplied by t squared over 2 e to the lambda 1t. The other one is going to be multiplied by t e to the lambda 1t. And the third one is going to be multiplied by just e to the lambda 1t. We didn't use this uh, one half here uh, when we were looking at 
uh, uh, differential equations before, but that's because the one half got absorbed in the constant multiplier. And we could do that here as well. And then uh, if we had m equals four, the pattern continues and we have uh, terms here that we would see from a Taylor polynomial. So t cubed over three factorial times e to the lambda one t, t squared over two factorial times e to the lambda one t, and t times e to the lambda one t, and then finally e to the lambda one t. So we know that there are there's a way to get to the solution vectors. Let's just see if we work out an example and uh, see how to find it. So here we have a three by three system of equations. And I'm not going to go through the details, but the eigenvalues uh, by solving the characteristic equation, you would find that the eigenvalues are lambda one equals negative one. It has multiplicity two and lambda two equals five. So if I look at the first one, which has multiplicity two, go ahead and uh, substitute that in there to uh, a minus lambda one i. I'll get this equation. I'm sorry, I'll get this coefficient matrix. And then I'll do some Gaussian elimination. What am I going to do? In this case, it's so easy. I'm just going to leave in the first row and first column. I'm going to leave that with a uh, two there because I saw that I could just uh, add the first row to the second row, get a row of zeros, add uh, subtract the first row from the third row to get another row of zeros. So I have two rows of zeros. That means that the first equation, after I divide everything by two, is x minus y plus z equals zero, and I have two free variables. y is free and z is free which means that I can choose uh, two pairs of values for y and z and get two linearly independent solutions. So for each row of zeros, you're gonna have a free variable. And then for each free variable, that gives you the number of linearly independent solutions that you can find. So let's make some choices for y and z. I'm going to choose y equals 1 and z equals 0. That gives me uh, x equals to 1. And so my first eigenvector, or first solution, would be uh, 1, 1, 0. And then I'm going to choose a, a second different pair, different linearly independent pair. So linearly independent means that uh, the uh, choices that you make are not multiples of each other. So uh, the yz pair here is not a multiple of the yz pair that you chose before. And so uh, I chose y equals one and z equals one. So that's definitely not uh, a, a scalar multiple of my original choices. And that leads to x equals zero. And then I get my second eigenvector. And so also, if you remember, when we talked about having only two vectors, if you wanted to check if you have two vectors which are parallel to each other, they would have to be scalar multiples of each other. And these are not scalar multiples of each other. So here is a case where we have a, a double root. So we have an eigenvalue of multiplicity two, but we're able to find two linearly independent eigenvectors. And that's because we had two free variables. Of course, we can also find the third eigenvector as we've done in the past, and then write down the solution. All right, so now there, in this case, there is no t times e to the lambda t because these two eigenvectors are linearly independent. So how would we obtain a second solution? Suppose we have only one eigenvector k, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the solution is a linear combination of e to the lambda 1t and t e to the lambda 1t. So the coefficient vector on t e to the lambda 1t is going to be our known eigenvector 
And then we have an unknown coefficient vector on e to the lambda 1, 2. So let's go ahead and take the derivative, because then what we're going to do is take this uh, assumed solution and substitute it into our differential equation. We're going to go ahead and multiply some things out and then set one side equal to zero and collect the coefficients on e to the lambda 1t and t e to the lambda 1t. Now look at the coefficients here. This says lambda k minus a k. Well lambda and k are an eigen value and corresponding eigenvector. So we know that a times k equals lambda k, or a k minus lambda k equals zero. Right? Or if I change the sign, I would have lambda k minus a k. So what that means is that this term is going to be zero. And now the lambda 1 t is never zero, so which means the coefficient, I'm sorry, e to the lambda 1 t is never zero. So the coefficient matrix here, or coefficient vector, should equal zero. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to go ahead and add a p and subtract lambda 1 p. Uh, so that would give me a p. Uh, minus lambda 1p. And of course, then I can factor out the p. So what would be left inside would be a minus lambda 1i p. All right. And what does that equal? It's going to equal k. So if I go back here, this is what I, I only left, I left the k on this side. So k here would equal this. So k equals a minus lambda 1 i p. And this is a system of equations. We should be able to solve for this vector p. But just like when we were solving for the eigenvectors, this is going to be a dependent system of equations. And so I, I'll go ahead and make the substitutions. Here is our uh, system that we started off with, which only had one eigenvector. It's a two by two system. We found the eigenvector corresponding to the only eigenvalue. The only eigenvalue is lambda equals negative three. And we found the eigenvector to be three, three one, I mean. So we'll put that in the place of k. In place of p, I'll just have unknowns p1 and p2. I'll put uh, lambda 1 will be replaced with negative 3. And I just have to solve this equation. So let me write out the coefficient matrix. Here, I have to put the 3, 1, because it's not 0, 0 anymore. Uh, so I'll have to put those coefficients and then run my same Gaussian elimination process. I'm going to go ahead and swap the first and second row. Uh, and then what I'll do is uh, I will go ahead and take three times the first row, subtract that from the second row, and that gives me my row of zeros, which is what I expected. So I have the equation 2p minus 6p, so 2p1 minus 6p2 equals 1, where p2 is a free variable. So I can just choose a value for p2 use the first equation then to find p1. And when I choose, say, p2 equals a half, then I can get p1 equals 2. So the value of p is a vector with components 2 and 1 half, which means that my second solution, remember, is the eigenvector times t e to the lambda 1 t, plus this vector p that we just calculated, times e to the lambda 1 t. And lambda 1, remember here, is negative 3. So I have my eigenvector 3 1 times t e to the negative 3 2 
plus my p vector times e to the negative 3t. So now I've got my second solution, and now I can write out the general solution. So my first solution is just c1 times the eigenvector times e to the negative 3t. And the second solution is c2 times the solution that we just found. What if you had a multiplicity of 3? Well, you can continue this. You start off with your eigenvector. That's going to be your first right-hand side. And you're going to solve the system of equations a minus lambda i times p equals k. Then what would I do to find my third solution? Well, p now becomes my right-hand side vector. And then I'll solve the same system, or this, using the same coefficient matrix, I'll solve a system of equations to find the vector q. And then my solution then is going to have three vectors or three powers of t times e to the lambda t. I'll have q times t squared over 2 e to the lambda 1 t plus p times t e to the lambda 1 t and then k times e to the lambda t.